Okay, buckle up, because here we got some really powerful tools that we're going to be able to, to use to make logarithms and exponential functions uh, a lot simpler. So this is some crazy laws that logarithms are able to do. The first one's called the product law of logarithms. And what this says is if you have a logarithm with like two things multiplied inside of it, you can actually split those up into two separate logarithms. And that's a bit of a crazy fact um, that becomes really useful because it allows you to break up really complicated things into a bunch of simpler parts. So for example, log 47 times 512, we can actually break that up. Oh, by the way, what's the base here? If we don't see a base, we're gonna assume it's base 10, right? Um, but what's gonna happen is we can break that up into two parts. We can actually break that up into log 47 plus log 512. And if you do those logs in your calculator, log 47 plus log 12, or sorry, 512, that's gonna give me 4.38, approximately 4.38. And if I do that first term, this one up here in my calculator, so log, and I put it in brackets, 47 times 512, that also gives me 4.38. So think about what we just did. We just broke down a big multiplication problem, multiplying these two big numbers together, into two separate things that we can add together. So it's a bit of a crazy fact, and it becomes useful um, really useful later in this course and actually really really useful in calculus breaks up really complicated problems into very simple problems So here's another one log base 3 of 81 times 243 So we can we know we can break this up using that law of what do we call it? Product law of logarithms. I always forget the names of these things. We can break that up into log base 3 of 81 plus log base 3 of 243. Now your calculator might not have a log base 3 button or change the base um, or to be able to change the base to 3 but think about what th what the answer is to this question. 3 to the power of something gives us 81 and it's gonna be a whole number. 3 times 3 is 9 times 3 is 27 times 3 is 81. So 3 to the power of 4 actually gives us 81. So the answer to this first part is actually 4 and then if we keep going, 81 times 3 is actually going to give us 243. So the answer to that second part is 5, right? 3 to the power of 5 gives us 243. So I was able to do that, and the answer here is 9. I was able to do that because this number and this number were pretty small, right? I was able to, to realize that 81 is just 3 to the power of 4. But... If these two numbers were multiplied, we had a huge number in here, I would never be able to figure it out that it's two to the, 3 to the power of 9. I could just use a lot of trial and error to do that. But it's much easier when we see what these two numbers are that are smaller, right? Alternatively, we could have done a uh, change of base here and here, right? We could have done log 81 over log 3 to find out that that's 4, and log 243 over log 3 to find out that that's 5, and then add them together. Okay, this one here. Can we actually simply, so this is the thing here, log base 4 of 2, is 4 to the power of something going to give us 2? You might be able to figure out what it is, but it's not that straightforward. And same thing with the second part, 4 to the power of something is going to give us 32. Again, that's not that straightforward, 4 to the power of 2 is 16, um, 4 to the power of 3 is going to be 64, so it's sort of between those two, right? So instead, why don't we try combining these two logs using the product log of logarithms backwards. So this is the same thing as saying log base 4 of 2 times 32, right? So instead of breaking it up into simpler things, let's put them together into something that's a little bit more complicated. Um, when I actually multiply those things, it's like saying log base 4 of 64. So 4 to the power of something, does that give us 64? And without even using our calculator, you should be able to sort of figure that out. 4 times 4 is 16, times 4 is 64. So basically the answer here is going to be 3, because 4 to the power of 3 gives us 64. So see, we're able to use this product law backwards as well. Now comes the quotient law. And the quotient law is similar to the product law, but instead, it's when we have things divided in a logarithm, we can subtract them. Another, another crazy fact, because it can turn 
complicated fractions and stuff inside logs into things that are very simple, right? So let's see that with an example. D has log base 3 of 27 over 81. Using that product law of logs, sorry, the quotient law of logs, I can do log base 3 of 27 minus log base 3 of 81, right? I can subtract those two things that are in the brackets, the, the fraction. It's just a crazy fact of logs that you're able to do that. And if you want to, you can check it out. See if this equation comes up to the same as this, or those expressions are the same thing if you just do it in your calculator. Um, but for now, we can evaluate this. 3 to the power of what gives us 27? The answer to that is 3. We've done this one a million times. Minus 3 to the power of what gives us 81? This is another common one that we've done. Um, and it's going to be 4, right? Because 3 times 3 is 9, times 3 is 27, times 3 is 81. So 3 minus 4. So the answer here is just negative 1. There we go. So here we go. Here's another one. We're going to evaluate this in a very similar way to the previous one. So we're going to have log base 2 of 75 minus log base 2 of 26. Now, unfortunately, 2 to the power of something that's going to give us 75, unfortunately, there's not a number, a whole number, that can give us that answer, right? So this might be a case where we have to use change of base. Or, of course, you people with your fancy calculators that are able to do any base. But to do change of base to this, all we got to do, remember, it's just like saying log of 75 over log 2 minus log of 26 over log 2. And after a little bit of calculator work, you should get that your answer comes out to 1.53, approximately 1.53 to do two decimal places. This is another case, question F. It's another case where we can maybe try to simplify by bringing this 48 and this 3 together. So our quotient law says um, we can break things up that are being divided or we can put them together if they're being subtracted, right? Going the opposite way. It's like saying log base 2 of 48 over 3. And if you simplify 48 over 3, that's going to give us log base 2 of 16. Do we need a calculator for this one? Hopefully not. 2 to the power of what gives us 16? I'm going to count on my fingers. 2, 4, 8, 16. That's 4. So 2 to the power of 4 gives us 16. And there's our answer to that question. So again, this is a case where bringing them together into one log actually simplified the problem for us. So this is a case where we have a complicated expression and it actually might simplify it to bring it all into one logarithm, right? Because Plugging all those things into your calculator can be a little bit time consuming. So it might actually be easier to bring it into one. So let's take it one step at a time. How could I combine those first two terms into one log? Or remember our product law, we can bring together that six and that eight inside one log. So it's log base five of six times eight. And what's six times eight? I need to do that on my calculator, obviously. 48 minus log base five of 16. Right? So I combined those first two already. How can I combine those two things now? Well, the 48 um, and the 16 can be combined, and there's a minus sign in between, which basically means those two things can be divided, right? Our quotient law of logarithms. So log base 5 of 48 over 16, right? Now, 48 over 16 is just 3. So this is like saying log base 5 of 3. So obviously this is much simpler to work with than this, especially if we have to use change of base to evaluate it. You don't want to have to use change of base three times. It's much easier to just use change of base once here. So again, to evaluate this, we need to do change of base. So it's going to be log three over log five, which if we do that on our calculator, it's going to give us log three divided by log five is going to give us 0 0.68, approximately 0 0.68. Okay, now one thing to keep in mind, this only works when the base of the logarithms are the same. You can't simplify using the product or quotient rules if those are not the same. It's like dealing with apples and oranges or simplifying terms, right? You can't, you can't bring those together. So here's another one, but it's got X's and Y's in it. 
let's try to turn this into one logarithm. Now you could do it one step at a time, right? You can simplify these two. It's just going to be log x, y, right? And then you can simplify blah, blah, blah. But if you see, there's a bit of a shortcut here. See, these three things are being added. So all you have to do is multiply these three things here. And then the y is being subtracted. So all you need to do is divide by y. So in one step, I should be able to realize I can do log of the three things in, that are added multiplied. So x times y times 3x, x times y times 3x, and then divide that by y, right? Because the y part here is being subtracted. And then I can simplify this expression, obviously, to log of those x's are going to multiply. So it's 3x squared. Oops. And 3x squared and the y's are going to cancel out. So I end, I end up with log of 3x squared. That's it. There we go. These are just exercises in can you go the other way? Can you break up things with x's and y's and variables in them? So the first example here, you could just write log base 3 of, well, we can break up the x and the y to be x plus log base 3 of y. Right? No way to really simplify that. For the second one, we can write the a and the b are multiplied together, right? So we're going to add those together. So it's like saying log um, of a plus log of b cubed. We can just keep that b cubed as one thing. And then the c is divided. So it's like saying minus log of c. And then lastly, over here, we can do that this is just going to equal log of u plus log of v minus log of root w. There we go. This law of logs is truly awesome, not even exaggerating. It is the most useful law that you will see in this package. So all it says, it's called the power law of logarithms, first of all. It says if we have an exponent inside our log, we're allowed to just write that exponent on the outside of the log. It's like a magic trick. And again, I'm not going to go through the, the proof of this or derive it, but essentially all we're doing is we're moving that exponent down in front, right? It is beautiful because it allows us to simplify things so much. For example, A, we have log base 3 of 27 to the power of 4. That's a bit of a mouthful. But making that a lot easier, we can actually bring that 4 down in front. 4 log base 3 of 27. Those two things are equivalent to each other. This is equal to this, which is a pretty crazy fact. Now, can we simplify this even further? Basically, that log base 3 of 27 part, what, what power of 3, sorry, 3 to the power of what gives us 27? And the answer to that is 3. We've done that one a million times. So 4, and then log base 3 of 27 is just equal to 3. So this is like saying 4 times 3, which is just 12. That's it. This big ugly thing comes down to 12. This also gives us a little bit of insight about why this thing works, right? Um, if we're doing 27 to the power of 4, right, it's like saying 3 to the power of what gives us 27, and then we raise that to the power of 4, right? So that's essentially what we did here. We found the power of 3, and then we multiplied it by this power of 4 to get a, a total power of 12. Just a little bit of insight in why it works. But anyways, let's go on to the next question. Switching back to blue here as well, like blue better. This um, this 2 here, we can again bring that down in front like magic, but it's not magic, it's math. Log base 2 of 32, right? 2 to the power of what gives us 32? I always count this one on my fingers. 2, 4, 8, 16, 32. So that's 2 to the power of 5 gives us 32. So this is like just saying 2 times 5, which is 10. Easy. That's easier than doing 32 squared which is going to be a big number, and then trying to figure out what, what value of 2 gets us there. It's going to be 10, but it, that's, it's easier to bring that 2 down in front. Okay? And this last one. Now, this one, we have a root. And remember, how can you represent a root 
uh, a square root as an exponent? And the answer is, it's like saying 125 to the power of one half, right? So again, the exponent I'm allowed to bring in front. So all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put that down as one half in front of the log base five of 125. And then five to the power of what gives us 125? 5, 25, 125. 5 to the power of 3 gives us 125. So this is like saying 1 half times 3, which simplifies obviously to 3 over 2. That's it. So what we're going to do for example 7 is we're just going to use all the laws of logs that we know. We're going to play with these, change them around a little bit, and see what we can do to these expressions. At any time, pause the video and try playing with them yourself, and then you can unpause and see what happens. So this first one up here, log base 3 of root x over x squared. That's a little bit of a mess, but we know we can simplify this by, first of all, breaking up the top and the bottom thing, right? Using our quotient rule of logs, or quotient law of logs. So this is like saying log base 3 of root x minus log base 3 of x squared. And then I want to make it a little bit simpler by getting rid of those exponents inside the log. So remember, an exponent of a square root is just one half. So I'm going to bring that one half down in front. So it's like one half log base three of x minus, I'm going to bring that two down in front, two log base three of x. Now notice, we can do a little bit more to this, right? We can simplify this because we have two things with log base three of x. So we can actually add one half of this minus two of this, and one half minus two is just gonna give us three over two, right? So it's gonna be like three over two log base three of x. There, that's a little bit simpler to deal with than this big ugly mess. Here's an ugly thing. Um, so let's look at the first term there, log root x cubed. Now one thing to notice is that this cubed only applies to the root x. It's not like doing the whole thing cubed, or else there would have to be brackets around the whole thing. So it's like saying it's just that root x cubed. Um, so first of all, I'm going to just bring down that 3, that cubed down in front. Um, actually, you know what? I'm going to do something else. I'm going to simplify, because that's like saying log to the x to the 1 half cubed, right? So I'm actually going to simplify that as log to the x to the 3 halves. See that? So I just multiplied the exponents. There we go. So that's the first term. Let's continue on with the second term. Um, log of x squared. I'm going to bring that 2 down in front. So that's going to be 2 log x. And then here, again, I'm going to bring down that, that 1 half. That's going to be the exponent of the, uh, the square root. So 1 half log x. There we go. Okay, so now continuing on this line, I can further simplify this as plus 2. Well, I'm just going to leave it actually like this. Log x minus 1 half log x. And again here on the next line, I'm going to bring down that 3 halves in front. Log x plus 2 log x minus 1 half log x. Now, there's different things we can do here. We can turn those all into one log again. Um, we can we can actually just add and subtract because all of them are just log x's, right? So I can just do 3 over 2 plus 2 minus 1 half, and that's going to give me 3. So essentially what this simplifies is to 3 log x. There's more than one way to get there, but that, that essentially is what it is in the end. Okay, this is a bit of a strange one. You might be tempted to break this up into two logs, but remember, that's not how the product law of logs works. It only works if the things inside the logs are multiplied together. Instead, can you see anything that we can do to simplify this? Can I not factor what's inside this and what's inside this? Let's see what we get if that happens. So we have log, and if I factor this, I'm going to get 2. Um, how am I going to write this? I'm going to write it like 2 times x minus 1, right, so that's all inside the log, minus log, and I can factor this too as it's a difference of squares, x minus 1, and I should put this inside a double bracket, x plus 1, right? So right now we have two things inside logs. Now, can we do anything to simplify this? Well, if we look at these big things as having, first of all, they have the same base, right? 
So can't we use our quotient rule because they're being subtracted? Our quotient rule to divide this by this inside one log? We can, right? So this is going to be like log 2 x minus 1 over x minus 1 x plus 1. Look at that. Much nicer because now we see that those two things cancel out, right? And that's log. Um, this simplifies to log of 2 over x plus 1. So if we wanted to, to further expand this out maybe and try to simplify it, we could break this up again into two separate logs, right? We can get it to log 2 minus log x plus 1. It doesn't really make it much simpler or much prettier. So I would accept either this or this as the final answer. Remember, log 2 is just a number. We can plug that into our calculator and it's going to give us a decimal number for that. But essentially, that's, that's all we can do. Um, to do this. One thing we should do though is remember how we cancelled out those x minus 1s? That means there is a restriction on this and whenever we cancel out we should always take note of that restriction. So this tells us that x cannot equal 1 and also there is a restriction here as well that tells us x cannot equal negative 1 or else the thing inside the log would be undefined. Ooh, this video is getting long. And it's because there's so many different things we can do with these laws of logs. So, can we simplify this in any way? I don't know. We have some x's, we have some y's, they all have the same base, which is nice. So let's, let's try to combine them into one log. Before we do that though, these numbers in front of the logs are a bit of a pain when we try to combine them, right? Because I want to basically be able to do this over this, right? Because they're being subtracted. But what do we do with these two and this one third in front? And the answer is, I don't really know. It's a little bit complicated. So instead, let's, let's do the opposite of that, of that power law of logarithms. Let's move that 2 into the log. So remember, that 2 is going to move into the log as an exponent. So it's going to be like this. Log base 2 of x squared. So it's like I took this and I moved it up there to the exponent. Minus, I'm going to move the 1 third into the exponent as well. So log base 2 of xy to the power of one-third. I put them in brackets because the one-third applies to everything inside the log. Plus, I'm going to move the three in there as well. Log base two of y cubed. So now, they all don't have things in front of them, right? They don't have coefficients in front of the logs. So now I can collect these all as sort of one log with a base two. So log base two of x squared, so the minus here means we're going to divide by xy to the one-third, and then because we're adding this y cubed, it's going to be in the top, right, times y cubed, something like that. Now can we simplify, this is not a minus sign in there, that's a multiplication sign, dot. So now can we simplify this at all? And the answer is, yep, we can, because we have an x squared divided by x to the one-third. And remember, when you have an exponent divided by, or something with the same base that's divided with different exponents, you can just subtract. You can subtract the exponents, right? So 2 minus one-third, I'm just going to do that in my calculator, it's going to give me five-thirds. So it's like we have x, oops, it's like we have x to the five-thirds, and then y cubed minus one-third. So three minus one-third, that on my calculator is going to give me eight-thirds. So y to the eight-thirds. There we go. So that's that, all simplified in there. We could break this up again into separate parts, x and y, bring down the exponents, um, and that's, you know, that actually might make it a little bit simpler, right? So I'm going to actually break that up, log base two of x to the five-thirds, plus y, sorry, not y, um, log base 2 of the y to the 8 thirds, like that. And then, because those exponents are ugly inside there, I'm going to pull them to the outside. So 5 thirds log base 2 of x plus 8 thirds log base 2 of y. There we go. This, it's not super pretty, but it's much prettier than this thing with some 
some terms in front and then we had things with exponents. So this actually is much nicer. So this last little question here, there's lots of ways to go about evaluating this, including one where you just plug the whole thing into your calculator at once, but that's not very elegant or nice. So let's try to see what we can do. First of all, it would be nice if we can break up the numerator and the denominator here, right? And we could do that using our quotient, uh, our quotient law, right? So log base four of the fourth root of 64 minus log base four of 4096. Right, so that's the first step, break up those things. Um, then the fourth root, another way of saying the fourth root of x, right, the fourth root of something, remember that just means it's like saying x to the power of one fourth. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna basically bring down that as an exponent outside the log. So it's like one fourth log base four of 64 minus log base four of 4096. Okay, can we do anything with that? Well, 4 to the power of what gives us 64? 4, 16, 64. It's 3, right? It's a power of 3. So this easily simplifies as 1 over 4 times 3. That one's nice. Now this one requires a little bit more work. 4 to the power of what gives us 4096? So this is where maybe you can either use change of base, right? Or you can check to see if there's any whole number. 4 to the power of, I don't know, I'm just going to check. 4 to the power of 5 gives us 1024. 4 to the power of 6, I'm just doing this on my calculator here, gives me 4096. So this, just from a little bit of a uh, little bit of trial and error here, I find out that this expression comes out to 6, right? Because 4 to the power of 6 gives me 4096. And then there we go. We can simplify this further as 3 over 4 minus 6 which again, if we turn that into a fraction and simplify, it ends up being negative 21 over four. There we go.